Yo, what's good? Big Z here, and today I'm going to show you guys how to make this. So that is my remake of the bass line from a song called Blow by a new artist from Spinning Records called Pickle. And I thought it'd be a perfect example to use for a video because this song just perfectly encompasses where house music is in 2019. So I know there are a million different subgenres of house music, but you can't argue that this style of house music, this specific style, has just blown up this year. And that's in large part thanks to Chris Lake slash Fisher. Fisher's project has really just exploded in 2019 and become really global. And this style is characterized by like, deep bouncy bass lines and 808 samples like 808 claps and 808 hats. And it also always has like a memorable vocal sample in there and some kind of memorable lead in the drop. But for this video, I really just wanted to focus on the bass line. You'll notice that the whistle lead and vocal sample from this original track is missing. That's because I really just wanted to do the bass line and show you guys how to make this bass and just talk about some other characteristics of where house music is in 2019 and how you can make your production sound modern like this. As always, the presets will be linked below for free. And if you want the project file to get the drum samples and dive deeper into what I've done to get this sound, then you can buy that below as well. All right, enough talking, let's get into it. So let's start with this bass line here. Bitch. So this bass is three layers and I'll go ahead and just solo the layers so you can hear them in action. So the first layer I'm going to talk about is just this main bass sound. That's really where the bulk of the sound comes from. Then I just have this plucky layer that's higher in the frequency spectrum. It's pretty low in the mix, but it adds some grit to the sound. And then I just have the sub bass, which is really just playing the sub frequencies here. So this sound in Serum is just a basic MG wave that's two octaves down. Um, everything's pretty simple in the oscillator tab. It's just one voice of unison, wavetable position all the way to the left. Then we have these envelopes just adding a little bit of release and shaping the sound a little bit. So then all the magic really happens in the effects section. So if I were to turn all these effects off, you'll barely be able to hear the sound. So then I'll just add in the effects one by one so you can just see what they're doing to the sound. So really cool how much effects can change such a basic sound. So um, first off, I'm using some compression just to compress the bass. Then I have this rectify distortion. I have no idea what rectify distortion is or what it does to the sound, but it sounded really cool when I put the drive and mix up all the way on the sound. And it just worked for the sound that I was going for, so I kept it. So next I have some chorus on there to kind of widen up the bass and make it sound a little more unique. So after that we have an EQ that's really only being controlled by this velocity function down here, which I'll get to in a second. And then after that we have this low pass filter that's being controlled by envelope two here. So back to this velocity function. So I'm modulating the gain of this one part of the EQ. So it's around 100 hertz. I'm just boosting when one specific note hits in the bass line. And that's the first note of the bar here. So you'll notice it comes in red. So I put the velocity here at 127 and all the other velocities are at one. 
And what that does, it doesn't affect the volume of the sound and serum and all, but what that does is allow me to drag this velocity parameter up here to this gain on the EQ. So that means every time this red note hits, this gain will be boosted. So the EQ curve will look like that. And the rest of the time, when the velocity is at one for all the other notes, the gain will be all the way back down to zero, so it won't do anything for the sound. And that's just to really emphasize that first bass note and really make it hit hard when the beat drops. So that's just a little trick I use to make that one note a little more powerful than the rest of the bass line. And you can see that in action right here when I play the bass line. So anyway, on to the next layer. This next layer is really just adding a plucky sound to the bass. It is a pretty simple sound. I basically kept all the same effects from the last sound, except I changed the distortion to diode two, and um, I put the mix at about halfway instead of all the way up, but everything else is the same besides that little EQ thing. Then in the oscillator tab and oscillator A, I have this acid waveform with the wavetable all the way to the left. Um, and then I have this other wavetable, basic MCB, with the position in the middle, and the level's at about 50%, and I'm using FM synthesis from B to affect that sound. So here's how it affects the sound. I just felt there needed to be a little FM layer on top of the other bass to make it sound a little more full. So that's pretty much all that's going on with that sound. Then after that we have the sub layer, which you won't really be able to hear if you're just listening on a phone or a laptop, but here's what it sounds like. And I find the best way to make the strongest subs is you can use some different wavetables and experiment, but I like the analog BD sine wave with the wavetable position all the way to the right. And in the effects tab, I always like to use multiband compression, then tube distortion with the mix and drive all the way up. And then after that, use the filter to low pass it. I find that's a good way to get the most powerful sub. So then I'm sending all these bases to this bass bus over here, where I'm adding some compression that really glues them nicely together. So without the compression, they sound like this. Then with the compression. It's a subtle effect, but it makes a huge difference in my opinion. Then after that, I'm just using Kickstart to uh, sidechain the bass to the kick. Um, it's at 100% for this one because I felt like it needed to be really sidechained. Um, then I forgot to mention the EQs I have on each bass. So this main bass layer has an EQ that's really bringing out some frequencies in the mid-range. If I turn these two EQ bands off and on, you'll notice a huge difference. Just makes the bass a lot more present in the mid-range and kind of brings out some good resonant frequencies that I wanted. Um, so that's being cut off everything below 150 to make room for the sub. Um, that plucky high bass is being cut off below 500 hertz to make room for the sub and the other bass. And then the sub, I'm not really using this EQ, I'm just cutting off everything below like 30 hertz. So that's pretty much it for how the bass was made. Now, just a couple other things I want to talk about this style of house music. It always has a lot of energy throughout the whole track. So like even in the breaks, the drum loop is always still going, but the sub frequencies won't be playing. So it'll just be like a top kick playing like this without this sub kick here. And then the hi-hats will still play and you can kind of mess around with some reverb and some effects just to really build everything up throughout the break and just build it up to that drop. So in this build up, I'm adding this snare hit, which I sampled here and I'm increasing the pitch of it throughout this whole build up. And 
And to make it really snappy, I'm adding some compression on there too. It helps to add some compression to your build snares to make them snappier and let some of the attack through. So other things I have going on in this buildup are some pitched risers and just some like uplifter effects here. So you really want to focus on creating a lot of tension in the buildup and make things sound pretty chaotic actually. So when that deep drop hits and it's a simple deep drop, then it just hits so much harder when there's a lot of chaos and tension building up before that. Like I mentioned before, there's a lot of like 808 sounding samples in this style. So like for instance, these claps. Really short, snappy clap. These hi-hats. Kind of like an 808 open hat sound. So like I said, if you want this project file to dive deeper into it, you can get that below. And if you just want the presets, you can get those below for free. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and Spotify below. And other than that, I'll catch you guys next time. Peace. Bitch.